This week, we're going to take a look at pressure bleeding our brake system on our experimental aircraft. In particular, we have a MATCO brake system. There are other vendors of brakes, but the principles are basically the same. Our goal is to initially fill our brake system with fluid for the first time and try and get all of that air out of the lines and the rest of the system. Let's take a look. Our system begins with the brake pedals attached to the master cylinder with a push rod where pressure is developed in the brake line to operate the disc brake calipers at the wheels. This Matco master cylinder has a built-in fluid reservoir. This is the large bulge you see at the top. That holds the fluid that supplies the master cylinder, which is the part below the bulge. Your brake system might have a separate reservoir and master cylinder design. The important thing to note is that the reservoir is at the highest point in the overall system. At the very top you see a white spot which is the overflow vent for the reservoir. As the brake pedal is pushed, fluid from the reservoir is pumped down into the brake line shown here exiting the bottom of the master cylinder. It heads by way of tubing to the wheel caliper. First, let's talk about the equipment we'll need for bleeding our brakes. We need a oil squirt can. I have a variety of them up here. It's not important. These are all inexpensive. Here's a metal type. Here's a plastic type. I bought this on Amazon for about $7. The important thing is that it have a trigger on it because this will be the source of our pressure when we go to inject the fluid into the brake system. I tend to like the clear canister so I can see how much fluid is left. A little difficult with the metal type. But you need to get one of those and you don't need to spend a lot of money doing that. Next, we need the proper brake fluid. Read your directions. This is very important because if you use the wrong type of fluid, it will eat the seals inside your brake system and they will leak and then you won't have any brakes. In our example, on these Matco brakes, we need DOT 5. That's what they specify. This is a silicone-based fluid. DOT 3 or 4 or 5.1 will not work, so read your directions and acquire the proper fluid. A bottle like this is more than enough to fill most systems. The trickiest part of the whole bleeding process is getting the fluid from your squirt can into the brake system. Now we're going to attach a tube to the bleeder valve on our brakes. And the trick is to get a piece of tube that fits very securely onto that bleeder valve. Here's how I did it. My squirt gun came with a nozzle. I then went to the hardware store and found some flexible tube, I believe this is 3 8 that fit very securely over the end. Now the other end of that tube would not fit on the bleeder valve, it was too large. So by purchasing a small piece of this quarter inch nylon tube, and this is very popular, you may already have it in your aircraft for your pedostatic system, it's available at the hardware store, they use it for water, flexible water lines, and that fit into my tube very nicely and because this is nice and rigid it forms a very nice seal over the bleeder valve on your brakes. A little hard to push on but that's good. The last thing you want is all sorts of leaks as you're pumping up your squirt can. You're going to develop some pressure and you want a nice good connection at both the bleeder valve and the other locations. So run to your hardware store. If you're not sure what size to get, get a number of different sizes. This is all very inexpensive tubing, but with the proper sizes and your squirt can, you'll have a very nice system that'll work for now and in the future. 
The principle we want to remember for effective bleeding is to inject the fluid from the lowest point in the system and that will push the fluid and air up and out to the top. Our assumption is that our fluid reservoir is at the highest point in the system. And here is the back side of the caliper with our hose feeding the caliper with the brake fluid and at the very bottom is our bleeder. Oftentimes on the bleeder nipple will be a small protective cover and that just keeps the dirt out so we'll remove that while servicing this. So the bleeder is at the bottom and that is a wonderful thing as we move the fluid the air will also be pushed up and all the way to the top where our main reservoir is located. The easiest way to attach our oiling pump, our brake fluid pump to this is to use the plastic nylon quarter inch tubing that we're familiar with and it's a tight fit and takes some effort but that's a good thing it means it'll stay on there nice and tight and we just use a lot of pressure and work it on there all the way up. Of course this would be full of our proper brake fluid attached with our flexible hose and attached to our nylon quarter inch hose and we would open up the bleeder with our wrench and start pumping. Of course, prior to hooking up this line, we would want this all filled with our brake fluid so we don't add extra air, any more extra air than we need to. To fill the system, we simply start pumping our squirt can until the fluid travels all the way up to the master cylinder and starts filling the reservoir. When brake fluid starts oozing from the vent, we know that the reservoir is more than filled and we are done. The bleeder valve at the caliper is closed and the squirt can removed. If our brake pedals provide a solid feel when pressed, our operation is a success. If in the future you need to disconnect a brake line to perform maintenance or parts replacement, remember that by injecting the fluid from the lowest point, you drive any air upwards to the reservoir where it can be expelled into the open air. So until next time, everybody, Back to building.